That's just for that? I think I'm just so used to hearing big numbers from you that I'm just gonna assume everything is really expensive. <laughs> None of this makes sense to my brain at all. So there's a trend going around right now where people are sitting down with their friends and significant others and having them guess the cost of their photo and video equipment. But I thought I'd take it a step further and not only have my wife guess some of the prices, but also see if she could rig out a full FX6 rig. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to study the camera in front of you because then I'm gonna take it apart and we're gonna rebuild it and talk about all the parts, so. I mean, I'm scared to move it around. <laughs> I'm gonna forget all of it in about two seconds, but. Now right, you feel comfortable? No. All right. <laughs> do, you, do you know which camera do you have in front of you? No. <laughs> You've talked about so many at this point, none of it is stuck in my head. So that's a Sony FX6, or at least the body of it. If you had to guess the basic body package for an FX6, which comes with the little handle that's in front of you and the tiny screen, what's MSRP for that? I'm gonna say, Three grand. MSRP for the body only is probably 5,500. On the used market, they're starting to come down a little closer to five. They've actually held their value really well. That's just for that? Just for the body, the handle, and the little screen. Oh, okay. Essentially enough to get running if you have a lens, and that's about it. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna assume because this line's up here that it goes here. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done? You're done. <laughs> This is all you need, right? I want to leave this last because I know how heavy it is, but I also know it's probably the simplest one for me to do. Okay, so right there you have the Zeiss Otis 85 millimeter. What is MSRP on that? Uh, 2,500. MSRP for those lenses individual was five grand. Jesus, really? Yeah, luckily the used market on those has dropped significantly over the past couple of years, and you can find that model for around two grand. This makes me the most nervous to hold. There you go. So I'm good now. <laughs> I'm telling you I'm panicking over doing this. So right there, you've got a small rig shoulder pad. Not a super high-end model, but still a good everyday. What is the going rate for a small rig shoulder pad? What it should be is like 50 bucks. Should be, based on feel? Based on all of it, it's a very simple piece. So I would assume it shouldn't be more than like 50 to 75. If it, if I had to actually guess, it's probably more like a thousand or 750. Yeah, 200 bucks. Okay, not, I One, mean. I think I bought mine for 150 used. It's a little high, but it is very light for 200 bucks. I'm assuming that locks it, right? There you go. So right there is the small rig mat box with no filters in it. What is the MSRP? 250. Right on the dot. Okay. 250. See, by the end of this, I'm gonna know all the prices. I'm not gonna be able to figure this one out. I should probably take that one. I'm assuming this is the top. Mostly because of the fact that the brand name is on it. Oh, that's really simple. Okay. There you go. I was expecting that to be a lot more complicated. I'm nope. not gonna lie. The thing about the matte box is it's not the matte box that gets expensive, it's the filters that go that in the matte box. It, yeah. Where but you can hold multiple in this, right? It comes with one filter tray. I have two more in there, so technically the price is a little higher than 250 for that, but it's fine. <laughs> and do you know what the little puck on the back there is? This? Yeah. No, not It's got quite. an air tag in it. An air tag? <laughs> okay, that's smart. Well, it's how, just like a case that holds it? Yeah. That's wonderful. How much is that case? It's gonna be at least 100, right? 12 bucks. Is it really that cheap? Yeah. It's like really nice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's one of those things where if someone's gonna steal it, they're gonna steal it, but at least like there's something. something. Yeah. Okay. We're getting down the nitty gritty and the stuff that I really don't know. I don't remember where you had this. Because I know that, that holds the monitor. What did you have this on? That's a small rig magic arm. What's the going rate for a small rig magic arm? 40 bucks. 39? <laughs> 35, 39, somewhere in there. Magic arms can get very expensive, but that one's been pretty good for me for monitors. I wouldn't put anything like super heavy duty on it, but for a monitor, perfectly fine. Now the real question is, how do you normally position your monitors? That's why I have it on magic arm, so I can do it however I want. So right there, you have a Atomos Ninja V with the raw recording SDI back. What is the MSRP for the Ninja 5 Plus? It feels really metal-y. Feels a little bit more expansive. Two grand? 
they've come out with a newer version since, and so I don't know what the going rate on that one is, but it's probably somewhere in the five to $600 range. Really? Oh, I expected this to be a lot more for some reason. I really expected this to be more expensive. I think I'm just so used to hearing big numbers from you that I'm just gonna assume everything is really expensive. <laughs> Something goes here. I feel like it's this. So right there you have a small rig, 99 watt micro V-mount battery. What's the going rate for one of those? $60. Going rate for a 99 watts about 240. None of this makes sense to my brain at all. That's crazy. You don't cheap out on batteries. That makes sense. Yep, so that's the stock monitor that comes with the package. Even if you're running a second monitor on that, it's always nice to have that with you because I've gotten to mini shoots where I have forgotten to change over the display to the monitor and not been able to see my settings and I had to go, like, go grab the monitor and put it back. Do it, yeah. And if I didn't have that, I'd be up a creek. Well, I'm assuming this goes here? Yep. So right there you have one of the Deity timecode boxes. What is the going rate for one of those? 20 bucks. It's gonna be more in there. <laughs> Can I change my answer? Yeah. 50 bucks. If you bought just one, it's about 200 bucks. Do you know what timecode boxes do? I'm assuming you can keep the timecode. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so I need, this goes here, I'm assuming. There are two jacks. Make sure you're plugging into the correct one. I, d I noticed there are words or letters next to these things, and I'm assuming the TC is the one I'm looking for. TC stands for time code. That makes sense. And I'm assuming this is the other one. Yep. So that is just a 3G SDI cable. What's the price on that cable? Should be like, I don't know, 15 bucks. It's a nice brand. I buy Alvin's cables. I think I paid 20, 25 bucks. Okay, that's not too far. No, but good SDI cables are something you want to invest in. I understand that one goes here above the time code one. Where does the other one go? It can't go up here, right? There's nothing on it for that to be up here. <sighs> so right there, you have an Audio-Technica AT875R. What is the going rate for one of those? I mean, it's a mic, so it's gotta be pretty high quality. Your audio is important. I'm gonna see. 500? Going rate's about 150. It's mm -hmm. not a super high quality mic. I bought it just mostly to run as an on-camera mic, but it actually does sound really good and I've used it many times as a boom mic. Mm -hmm. Well, good deal. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming... Oh, wait. We're figuring it out. A snap is good. It's, a snap is either really good or really bad. <laughs> it seems like a secure snap, so I'm assuming it's a good one. <laughs> and I am taking it, this opens up. So the cable there comes with the cage package for the FX6. So all of the metal that's on top, on the side, and on the bottom, not the actual VCT plate though, and the thing holding the battery on the back. What is the going rate for the Malrig FX6 cage package? 350. 160. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> I feel like I got one close and that was about it. So one thing left. Because the Otis is a big old manual lens, you need a way to focus it. So right there, you have a tilt to follow focus. How much is the tilt to manual follow focus? A hundred. 80 bucks. Okay. I wasn't crazy far off on that one. I'll take it. That's yeah, a good little manual follow focus. It's just- It's smooth. Nothing fancy to it, but it's really nice and light. Does it go in one of those? Does it really? Never in a million years would I have guessed that. Why would you think the rails were for? I don't know, balance, <laughs> shutter, aperture, <laughs> I don't know. Hmm? Success? Success? Oh, I can take your job now? It's all yours. Sweet. This is it. Amber right, Hendricks, Director of Photography. <laughs> I'm taking the channel too, let's go. <laughs> Completely, it's just gonna be my face posted over your body. So overall, how difficult was it to build out? Not as difficult as I thought it would be. What was the hardest part? Honestly, probably the fall of focus. Just, I would have never guessed that's where it went. Holding this would be impossible. I could not It doesn't imagine. help that I did give you my heaviest lens. Yeah, I don't think I could hold it for longer than about five minutes before I'd have to be like, all right, let's take a second. Good job. I guess I use Starbucks now. Give me some kind of drink. Why? <laughs>